errors were. And I explained this in your feedback. Anyways, if you had a start here, then you had a line going there, a line going there, or maybe from the sides or something like that, and then you had some kind of input here, and you had some kind of input here, and then maybe they rejoined to go back down to an if statement or something like that. The only box that can have two lines going away from it is the if statement or if the, the diamond shape because sometimes the, uh, the decision means something else other than if. So you didn't get full credit if you did that. The only shape that can have two lines going away from it are the diamonds. Right. Not anything else because otherwise how would the program know which it's going to do? Right. This is just a recipe to follow. You know, and if the recipe said, you know, add sugar, and then it said, you know, stir eggs, and it was like that, you wouldn't know which to do first. Pretend you're a machine, right? You have to be presented things in order. If there's a split, it doesn't know which way to go. So just move these two things so that they're in a line together, right? Now the lines are all horrible. Let me delete some of them. See if I can get that to happen, right? You know what I mean. I'm going to leave that line botched. But you know what I mean, right? You just start, block, block, block. This one has two lines going away, and then they rejoin. The other thing, easy, easy, easy peasy to fix, is just putting things in the wrong shape. If this is an input statement, input x, it better be in a tilted rectangle. If you put it in uh, one of these bad boys, no credit. Well, I mean, you get credit for the flow chart, but not for that particular part of it, right? You're going to take a hit for that. So if you put uh, inputs or outputs in those, so I saw somewhere the inputs were in those shapes and the outputs were done, you know, in, uh, I think, rectangles, regular rectangles like that, you know, output, whatever, something like that. They just got to be tilted regs. All input, all output need to be tilted regs. The stuff that goes in a square rectangle, a pure rectangle, or 90 degree rectangle, are math statements, or variable declarations, right? x equals 3, you know, and then later on you do some kind of calculation, right? e is equal to, you know, right? If you're uh, going from pseudocode, right, those would be set statements, right? Your set statements go like that. And then we introduced a new rectangle called the predefined process block. If you're calling a process, right? You know, I want to do my draw triangles method, right? Function. Then it goes in one with the bars. Book shows a horizontal bar. What we got is the one with the uh, double bars. So that's what we do. And then if that was going to call a function, then we would define a function. See, this is totally botched because I have only one line going away from the if statement, not two, and then I have breaks and stuff. Right, so let's just pretend that I can fix all that. There we go. It's okay to have an if statement that only goes, right, one way to do something and then the other does nothing. That just means there's not an if else, right? If, if whatever that is, then yeah, I better do something, right? Print an error message or whatever. Else, don't do anything. It's all good. And then keep going that way. If you have a function call like we have here, you start a function, excuse me, a module if we want to use the book's terms. Since this one's called draw triangles, this one also be called draw triangles. You know, and then go and do your fancy stuff, whatever you're supposed to do. And then instead of stop, it should be return. I know you can't read that right. Draw triangles, do something cool, and then return. Whereas if it's the main code, if it's the unindented code, it's start, do some cool stuff, and then stop. And personally, I like to colorize my function headers. Right? Here's a draw to make them easy to spot. And I did the uh, wrong one. Like, right? And so that way it leaps out to my eyes. 
when I'm looking at it. Like that. Right. Cruising on down here. Oh, I'm going to be calling a function. It's going to run that stuff and then it's going to come back. Like calling molt underscore try or, or whatever we did on Tuesday. You know, drawing circles and whatever. One last thing about grades. I don't know if I did this in this class, but if I ever give you a grade of 9.99 rather than a 10, it just means there's something I want to comment on. You didn't do anything wrong, or maybe you just did it a little bit wrong, right? Like, uh, maybe I'm not going to come down like a hammer because you forgot one line, right? But I want you to notice you forgot a line. I make, make a 9999. And then if you're feeling like it, you can go ahead and try to compensate for what I said. If you want to get that last 1%, Go ahead and upload something, but you know the difference between 9.99 and and 10 is not gonna you know crucify your grade. You don't have to upload something, but if you feel like seeing perfect 100s all the way down, and feel free to fix it. All righty. Any questions over this stuff? I think the I made the other class actually flowchart the uh, multiple triangle code and I didn't make y'all do it. I believe that to be correct. Let me show you the flowchart and you can go no, no you're wrong. You covered that. Let's go look. Alright, here was our they did a little bit simpler version of it because I wanted to take the time to flowchart it. I didn't make a... Y'all flowchart it, so we had one with draw circles and stuff like that. But you remember the code, right? Define triangle and define mult try. And then we had some start, and maybe we had a loop that was calling multiple try, or maybe we didn't, whatever. You know, that was the code. And here's the flowchart for it. Here is draw triangle. I usually put my main code actually over on the left excuse me, to right. Why do I do that? Does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. But when you define your functions, your functions come first in the code. So when I'm flowcharting them, I like to do them first. And so our first function here was called def triangle. So I put the triangle there. Anyways, and so what's triangle supposed to do? It's supposed to draw and then turn 120 degrees and draw again and turn 120 degrees. And I think maybe we did it fancier with loops or whatever. We'll see that. I think it would be a good idea for us to flowchart this ourselves. And then we had another one called multiple tries, you know, multiple triangles. And so what it did is it had a loop that would draw a triangle and then come back and draw another triangle and then draw another triangle and it kept repeating in that loop until it was finally done. Notice I have four rather than if in there to distinguish. The book does not show a difference but I between if and four. I like putting that word there to make it easy to spot. Doesn't matter if you do it or not. Then, you know, return. Then over here, right? This is the one that calls that code, right? This calls multi try. So the execution jumps over here, does that. It loops. Each time it loops, it calls the other one. That's why I colorized it, right? You don't even have to see what's going on in order to know what it's doing. It blips over here, does that, comes back does something else and then it loops again as long as this condition is true. In this case it's accounting. It's counting up to a certain number. When it's finally done it returns back and it runs over here. Now I drew some arrows here for a special purpose. When I call let me show it in this one. When I call triangle I'm specifying a size. And then over here I made this variable, this parameter called side. And then that confused uh, like two students in the other class, so we spent about five minutes talking about it, and it wasn't a stupid question at all. Well, why isn't that size? Or why is this not side? And it's because when you're calling the function, when you call the function, you stick something in there, and it's passing it to the function. That's the term that people use, pass. So it's like I want to, you know, I want you to do something. So I attach a map to a football and I pass it to you. But I'm not going to pass you the original map. I don't have the map anymore. Instead, I'm going to make a photocopy of the map and I'm going to give it to you so you, you know, and then throw it to you so you can go follow the map. So this gets copied. That variable gets copied. 
and kind of paste it into wherever it's going. It gets pasted into the parameter variable. The parameter variable is the one that's defined with the DEF keyword. When we define the triangle function, we said, okay, I want, you know, I want it to be that big. I want each side to be of that length. When we called it over here, we had to specify a value, but it wouldn't it wasn't called side because we didn't call it side here. It could be anything. It could be an expression. It could be two times size, right? And that's going to make it twice as big as what we specified over there. Or, or it could have just been a variable. I want my triangle to always be 50, right? This value is a, gets copied. This one that receives it, the parameter variable, just gets a copy. I put a number on the football. I threw it to you. You know, it was a copy of the original number. That's why the variable names don't have to be the same, right? When I throw the football to you and it's got a number on it, you can pick up that piece of paper and write any, you know, any caption up at the top. It doesn't matter what I called it when I passed it to you. You can give it a new name. You can give it the same name. And it will, I would not have had that conversation if I had also called that size. And honestly, I don't remember whether our code did that or not. All right, I'm going to, up. well, it's already there. Um, it's in our note, notepad. I would like to take the code for our drawing program and get it going as a flow chart. But if you weren't here, you don't have that code. Or maybe you did it at home. But what we're going to do is if you don't have that code, I want you to go grab it from the notes. And um, that's what I'm going to do to start working on it. Launch good old idle. If you were here, just open your last document, right? Go file recent files. Find it that way. Okay, so I need to blip over into the notes and find the last lecture if you weren't here. Right? So daily notes. The last lecture was called Turtle Functions, Triangles and Circles, and looks like I forgot to give it a name of H, so let me uh, stick an H in front of its name. All right. Then open the notes up. Just copy all of that. I highlighted it all. I right click and choose copy or control C or command C. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go and create a new file. I guess we're on lecture I if that one was H. So file, new file. Lecture I, and do you have to be making a new copy if you already had it? No. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to even call it lecture I. I'm going to open a new file when I start creating new notes. This is just a rehash of the last one. And so make a new file. Do a save as. I don't care what name you give it. I wouldn't call it something that, that actually makes much sense, though. I think I'd call it draw triangles or triangles or something like that. Again, just for the people who aren't here, I'm calling it triangles. And I'm pasting it. I'm even deleting all the comments. There's our code. I'm going to run it, make sure that I didn't break it. It draws cool stuff. It even filled it. Some, uh, some students wanted to know how to add color to the thing, so I added color. So sometimes the notes are not exactly what we did in class, and if you copied and pasted the notes, I would know that you just copied and pasted rather than typing it in from the assignment. If you're going to copy and paste it rather than type it in from the assignment, I'd rather you fill out the video review form. But on the other hand, you could go ahead and copy and paste it, you know, and look at it and see how it works, which is what we're going to do right now. What this one does is it had to have an import statement. 
to import the turtle. It had to create the turtle. And then we set the speed for lickety split. Tends pretty fast. Zero is ultra fast. Then we had a function called triangle, which accepted a parameter variable called size. And the angles for a perfect triangle, I think it's called isosceles or something like that, is 120. So we set a variable for that just so that we didn't have any magic numbers down in the loop down here. A triangle has three sides, so we used a for loop. Doesn't matter if you don't know what a for loop is yet. Just take it on faith that we have a for loop to repeat this triangle three times. I mean, excuse me, to repeat drawing the line and then turning left three times to execute our triangle. And then we return out of our function. So that's our first module. Draw a triangle. Our second module. Molt underscore try. We'll draw multiples. Oops. Failure. Multiple triangles. And again, it uses a loop to draw multiple triangles. It uses some variable called numtry. Now, in a back to, in a feat of bad programming, I don't see where I declared numtry. I failed. I don't even know where I defined it. Okay, I did it up at the very top. That was bad. This is called global variables. Global variables should usually be avoided in Python. When you get to Java, um, you can use a kind of a global variable called a, a class member, but we're not doing Java. So it was kind of dumb of me to stick those variables there. That was kind of a failure. But ignoring that, this is going to loop up to a certain number of times, drawing a triangle, and then turning a little bit. And we see that in the code. It drew a triangle, it turned a little bit. It drew another triangle, it, it, it turned a little bit. How it does that is not super duper important for the purpose of drawing the flow chart. And if you haven't watched the lecture yet, then it will all become clear when we do it. Then we wanted to kind of draw that flower thing with the multiple circles. I'm going to delete this line that colorized it. No, I'm not. I'm going to leave it there. But I'm going to comment it out and not... Uh, and not uh, put it in the flow chart, right? Doesn't matter whether you do any of this stuff or not. I'm not expecting, you know, two students did the colors. They stayed after class. So this one, draw multiple circles. Again, we should be passing in the value for the number of circles to draw, rather than declaring it up above. I want to fix this code to be better code. So, if you don't have your file open from Tuesday, if you would be so kind as to go ahead and open it. And I want to make sure that everybody's got it compiling as is, if you want to do this, right? It's never mandatory to get all this code going. I want to make sure that everybody who wants to do it has a working version of it before we start making changes. Because if it doesn't work and then we make changes, things are just going to be really, really confused. I guess I'm going to resume the lecture. So just for fun, I'm changing the number of circles to 90, and I'm going to set the speed up to max speed. Warp speed is 0. 1 is the slowest, 10 is the fastest, but 0 is even faster. There we go. Kind of nifty. We could make it a bigger circle by changing some variable here. We hard-coded the size of the circle into 20. We have a magic number here. I could not change the behavior of it just by going to the top and editing something. The circles are always of the same size. I'm going to change that. But that's not the key change. I'm going to undo those changes pretty quick. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. All right, I'm going to undo those changes because we're going to make the code look better. And what do I mean by better? We're going to make it. I guess I did need that one. If you have it working, here's the first thing I want you to do. Go ahead and make the speed zero so it goes max speed. But delete these two global variables. It's lame to have global variables. It's bad programming. Sometimes you have to have them. Fred here is also a global variable. Why am I calling it a global variable? Because it's defined outside of all of the functions. Both triangle and molt try and molt circ all need to use the Fred variable. 
And since they all need to use it, I declared it above all of the functions. It's global. It's like the global police. They can go in any country, you know, and do stuff. Then you have variables that are called local variables, right? Those are the variables that are declared inside a module. Angle is declared inside here, so we can't use it down here, right? He only has jurisdiction within that function, within that module. You know, Midwest City Police can't go to Dallas and start, you know, pushing people around. Unless you're Beverly Hills Cop and, you know, then you can go anywhere you want and do anything. So anyways, this is a local variable. These are global. I want to make this better code. I'm going to delete the global variables. Now it's broken because it was depending upon those global variables. Boom, it's broken. It says number of try not defined in line 18. Sure enough. So I'm going to find num try. Now I'm not seeing my line numbers. They're down here at the very bottom. It says line 18. So I'm going to scroll up and down. It may not be line 18 on yours, but when you find the statement that says for x in range num try, that's the one with the problem. Why? Because that variable is no longer declared. Got to be declared before we use it, though. That's like the first law of programming. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass it in as a parameter. So I need to copy that one and paste it between the parentheses. And while I am here, I'm going to take this 100 here and put it in a variable instead. Why? So that it can be changed easy. I don't want a magic number. I don't want it hard-coded. I don't want an unnamed constant. So I'm going to double-click that 100 and call it side. That's the side length. Right? We're drawing a triangle and we want it to be that side size. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to go rehash that. I'm going to call everything size where it uses that now. So size, and that also needs to be a parameter because if I try to compile it now, it's going to complain that it doesn't know what size is. Right? I tried to use a variable. We don't know what it equals. It's not declared anywhere. So I'm going to put it here. Now it should compile a little bit better. At least it's not going to blow up here. Now, why am I not worrying about 360 as a magic number? Because that's just kind of a constant. It's a fact of life, like pi r squared, or, you know, um, diameter is equal to 2 pi r. 2, the constant, is part of a mathematical formula. Um, so, I'm not going to define a variable to hold that 2, because that would just make it harder to read. Why 360? Because there's 360 degrees in a polygon or a circle. So it's just a fact. I'm going to leave that alone. I could calculate angle beforehand. Yeah, let's do that. If you're caught up with me, cut that. Highlight all that. Cut it. And make that say angle. All right, now we've got another problem. What's the problem? We have a variable, but it's not declared. It's not defined. We have to calculate that. So take that stuff you copied and paste it here after typing angle equals 360 divided by num try. All right, this function should compile perfectly. The next time we, com we uh, compile it, we're going to get a different error somewhere else, but not there. Not anywhere up to line 20 on my thing because that's the last line here. All right, so I am getting errors, but it's line 33. Here's what I want you to do to double check that we're getting all the way to this point without a syntax error. Just move your cursor down to the last line of the Molt Try module and see what line number it is. It's 20 on mine. And then run it, and when we get a syntax error, make sure that it doesn't say the syntax error is above, is on or above line 20. It's not. It's somewhere below it. So. I'm good to go, but does anybody else need my eyeballs on the screen? All right.
All right, I just said a, st a lot of stuff without the turtle, I mean without the recorder going. Important business, never say anything into the Python directory, which is the default when you do file save. Always go somewhere else. Make yourself a program directory, a class directory, something like that. Just not in Python 37. Go to the desktop or your flash drive or something. And then, that's an error obviously, never call your file turtle.py or math.py or another library that you're going to use. But those are the only libraries we've used so far. All right, onward and upward. And even if it's not working for you, go ahead and try to make these changes as we go along. But it doesn't matter, right? The, the real point of this is just to make the code look like what we're going to flow chart. So what's our next syntax error? Our next syntax error is on line 33. As a reminder, here's how you see what line you're on. Now some programmers, uh, some um, editors have the line numbers down to the side, right? It makes it super easy to find, but this one doesn't. Right down here, it keeps getting hidden by my uh, by my taskbar. It says line 10. I'm going to keep hitting the down arrow until I find line 33. There's an error there. What is the error? The error is that this has two parameters, but we're not passing any values in to fill those. I need to pass some values in to fill them. Like how many triangles do I want? I want three triangles. How many, how large do I want them? I want them to be big, 150 pixels. Now that may be enough to get it working. I don't have a line 33. Well, it's not line 33. Compile on yours. Run, run module, find the line number that it gives you the error at. Like that and then go to that line. I'll come over and help. We're learning debugging while we do this as well, by the way, guys. Okay, so I got a question. Uh -huh. I didn't put a, a number in there. Uh, uh, when I copied, when I cut, I have a phrase there. No, no, no. Okay, so make it 360. 360. Divide by, and then I already typed it. Yeah, yeah. I already, I'm sorry. I, I I messed you up. Okay, I've got the slash there. So then type num underscore try. Yeah. Go ahead and compile it. Now we're gonna get another error message. It's to be expected. Let's go look at the line number. The line number is 48. So you can come back to your code. Scroll down and find line 48. You can use the down arrow. That's how I do it, actually. Right, because we're just going to do this next time. We the down arrow. 546. Look to see what I typed in there for the parameters for multi -right. Anybody else? Ultra three. Right, draw three triangles of size 150. All right, so apparently that's enough to get it running, but I'm still not satisfied with it. And you're saying, why are you not satisfied? Okay, because now we have another error. Num is not defined inside the mult circle function. So how do I know that? It says... Num is not defined, and I go and look where it is. It's not defined in line 27. It tells me the function, multcirc. That's enough information for me to go and find it. Here's multcirc, multiple circles. Let's just delete all of that. I'm going to be cheesy and delete all that. It's going to make our flowchart smaller, but that's okay. The point of this is not to have the hugest program in the world. Delete the entirety of Molt Circle and then come over here and delete the call to Molt Circle. If you ever need to restore it back to the way it was before you did all this, you can always just go and copy it back out of the notes if you're editing the same one you had before. Oh, and by the way, guys, 
Are y'all the class who I totally messed up by telling y'all some of y'all to stay home? Yeah. yeah, that's why more than half of y'all weren't here. I would not have done that lecture, this uh, continuation of the lecture, if I had remembered that. What happened is I needed to tell the 11 o'clock class not to come in, and I chose your list of contacts rather than the other list of contacts. And I think I mentioned that in a follow-up text, but a lot of y'all got told no class, right? A lot of y'all didn't show up. That's totally okay, totally on me. I apologize. All right, I think the program's going to run without syntax errors now that I've deleted the molt circ and now that I'm not calling molt circ. And I'm much happier with it. It doesn't have any magic numbers defined up at the top. Everything is being passed in as a parameter, right? Previously, I set the number of triangles up at the top. We're just going to stop here, guys. No, I really want to flowchart it. But I want to flowchart something that we write, not, uh, not something that you were just copying and pasting. So we're going to write a different program that uses functions, and then we're going to flowchart it. But it's not going to be a turtle program and stuff like that. So watch the video over this weekend, and then what we're doing now will make more sense, right? Because I know not everybody watched the video the very day, right, that we were gone. So let's begin the lecture proper. We're going to make a brand new program. So new file. Let, save it as lecture I, unless you call that one lecture I, in which case just tack it onto the bottom or something. All right. I kind of do want to have an example of a loop just because it's cool to get introduced to that early. So what I'm going to do is we're going to write a program that prints happy birthday the number of times that the number is passed in. If we say birthday parentheses 10, it's going to print happy birthday 10 times. If we say birthday parentheses 10 million, it's going to print it 10 million times. So we need a function called birthday. DEF, a module named birthday, DEF, birthday, parentheses, and we need a variable. Well, let, let's, let, let's not put a variable here yet. We're going to make an incremental change. So parentheses, in parentheses, colon, and instead of making it a for loop, I'm going to make it a while loop. So x is equal to 1. And then while x is less than or less than or equal to 4, colon, tab, you know, it should be tabbed already, print, parentheses, quote, happy birthday, end quote, in parentheses. Now I'm going to add a, some comments just to make the uh, logic a little bit easier. No, I'm not. But I am going to put a return. Put a return on it, but back tab it so that it's under the while, not under the print statement. If you left it under the print statement, it would return after only printing birthday one time. Okay, this is awesome. It's supposed to print happy birthday three times. I run it. It's not going to work. It doesn't do a dang thing. Why? Because we defined it, but we never called it. It's like I wrote down a list of instructions, but I never gave you the list of instructions, right? I'm just sitting on them. Not going to do us any good. I drew a map, but I never drew, gave you the map. I made a recipe, but I never gave you the recipe. Nothing happens if you have a definition, but it's not called. Oddly enough, I can call it as soon as I run it. If I do run module, and then I come to the shell, and I type in birthday parentheses in parentheses, all right, there it goes. Now I've made a mistake. This is called an infinite loop. The mistake is, is that it's printing it out infinitely. It's looping forever because the value of x never changes. We could even see that if we added comma x to our print statement here. This mistake was not intentional, by the way. So after happy birthday, end quote, I'm going to put comma x. Let's say I was trying to debug it because I didn't know what the answer, the, the answer to the problem was. 
which when you're doing this for the first time, you may not. You may not know why it's looping endlessly. So, birthday, parentheses, in parentheses. And it just says happy birthday one. That tells me, oh, that variable is never changing. X is never changing. This is our condition. Just like an if statement, if this condition is false, it's not going to execute the while loop. But if this condition is true, it's going to keep re-executing this body here, which is only one statement long, but that's okay. It's still a body. Until this condition is no longer true. But it's never going to reach 4 or go past 4 because we're not changing x. So next line, x plus equals 1. I still want to get your turtle working. I don't want you to leave today with your, your computer being broken like that. So if you don't mind staying a few minutes after. No. All right, that'd be cool. All right, so maybe another problem entirely, but I bet we can diagnose it. It's not going to run until I'm actually calling birthday. Like I said, doing the definition is like writing a, a, a recipe, but until you hand the recipe to somebody else and you tell them to do it, not going to do it. Now it should work. It should print out happy birthday four times. But programmers are never, never satisfied. We got to improve it. We got to make it to where we can specify the number of times to print happy birthday. I wanted to print 10 times. And I accidentally closed my code. Yeah, whatever. All right. File, recent, lecture I. All right, here's how I want it to work, but this is going to introduce this index error. I better wander around and make sure that everybody's going before I take the next step, but I'm going to show you the way I want it to work. I want to be able to pass in 10 and have it print 10 birthday messages, but it's not there yet. If you had the return statement indented, then what that means is, okay, loop four times. Print something out, add one to X, and return. Whoops. It can't loop, right? It returned immediately. What it's got to do... Okay, here's another one of my stupid similes, metaphors. Say I give you a shopping list at the grocery store, and you got the shopping list, and you got four things. You've got to get the milk, and you've got the, you the eggs, and whatever. So you go and you get the milk, and then you think that there's a return statement after that, so you go home. You didn't get the rest of them. The return statement has to be back tabbed under, so it's lined up with the while. Now, here was my other concern. Sometimes, if you start mixing tabs and spaces, it complains. If I don't line it up exactly, it's going to complain. Don't don't make these don't make these any of these changes. And if you made the first one, undo it. All right, it's giving me an error there, you know, and maybe by backspacing it, maybe I've got it right, but you might get some kind of error still. If you get frustrated about the indention, here's what I would do. I would back it all the way back up to the beginning by any means necessary, and then I'd tab it back into the right place. All right, if you were following along, please undo all those changes, run it again, make sure it works. Okay, so I want to do a couple more things. I don't want it to say happy num birthday number. I want it to say something like happy birthday Fred, right? And then happy birthday Jill and something like that. But first things first, we need to make it so that we can specify the number of times to say happy birthday. So, in order to be able to specify, if I wanted it to print out birthday 10 times, well, I've just made a syntax error, but I'm going to correct it. Here's the error. Birthday takes zero positional arguments, but one was given. All right. Go ahead. Speak Greek to me. A positional argument is the thing that fills in the parameters. We have given it one argument, but it doesn't have any parameters to accept that argument. So we've got to create a parameter that will accept it, a parameter variable. All right, now to work, sort of halfway. 
still only printed out four times. And the reason for that is that one. Since I pass this in, I want to use it, right? If I give you a number, I want you to use that number. If I want you to go seven steps forward, but you go four, you're not following. All right, there we go. I changed that four to a num, and now it should print out 10 birthday messages. Please tell me how. Okay, good. All right. Now it's working. I'm going to test it. I'm going to make it print out two birthday messages. And y'all don't see me do all this. I hit Control S or Command S every time I type just to save my latest change. Okay. I'm happy with it. Is it broken for anybody? Nope. Let's see. We're still working. Yep. I'm, I'm going to add some comments. Num is how many times to print the message. And then I'm going to try to kind of tab it over. You don't have to line your comments up like that. That's just kind of being, you know, picky. Num is called the parameter variable. Anything you define inside the parentheses after the def statement is called a parameter variable. The book may leave off the term variable. Down here, we're calling it. So, two is the argument that fills in the num parameter. If you have a parameter, you got to give it an argument. I wonder why it's called an argument. It's probably a mathematical term for algebra that I've forgotten. I don't know. All right, I added comments that would not change the behavior of it. If you're typing the comments, go ahead and take a pause because I'm going to go on and show the next thing to do. What I want to do now is I want to be able to specify the name of the person. Right, happy birthday, Fred, whatever. And it's kind of dumb to be printing out happy birthday, one, two, three, four. That was just a debug thing. We wanted to see what was wrong with it. Okay, so I wanted to print out a name. I'm going to change that X to a name. Well, that's not going to do it because name is not defined. Somebody tell me a good place to define name. And your answer is probably going to be at least 50% correct. Anybody got an idea of where I should be defining name for best results or even worst results? There's 10 of y'all in here. Somebody be brave. Right here. Yeah. Or under it. We could do this. Don't do this, guys. We could do this. Name is equal to Bob, right? It's going to print happy birthday Bob every single time. But I wanted to make it so that I could, you know, down here, specify someone. So undo that. Instead, I want to make it a parameter. So after num, I'm going to put comma name. Now I've messed up my comments. Name is another parameter. That's enough to say about that. Now I've broken it again. I want you to run it and tell me what I should do to fix it. Or better yet, fix it yourself. I'm going to wander around and see who gets who figures out how to make it say happy birthday Bob without <coughs> typing in name equals Bob here. All right, so when I run it now, here's the error message it's going to give me. Again, it's going to say something about birthday is missing one required positional argument, name. If I go and look, it's because I have name defined here, but it's not being passed in a value here. We have a parameter without an argument. So I'm going to come here and tack on a name. So comma quote Bob inside the call to birthday. Birthday parentheses two comma quote Bob end quote in parentheses. And I could add a comment about what that is, but I've already said how this one works, right? 
Now we should be good to go. If you're not, let me know. I thought I saw one. I guess I need to look close to it. Oh, was that what that is? Yeah, yeah, gotta have quotes about it. Okay. You're not the only one. So. so, about four folk did this. I told you to type Bob. You did that. Looks good. Run it. It's an error. Bob is not defined. That's the difference between a variable and a string. If it shows up in black, it's a variable, meaning it needs to be defined before we use it. Well, I don't want to define it before I use it. It's just a name, right? It's just something I typed in. I put quotes around it. Now, I swear, once I demonstrate that, then people start turning in code that looks like this. They think they need to put quotes around everything. A is equal to 1, 2, 3, right? And C is equal to, you know, a times, right? No, 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 no. The only time you put quotes around something is when it's a word that you want displayed on the screen, when it's a string, right? Here we have that. It's a string. We want it displayed on the screen. Well, what if we put name in quotes? It's certainly not going to print happy birthday, Bob. It's going to print out happy birthday name. Not what I wanted. By putting quotes around it, I turned it into a string. Technically, it's known as a literal. It's an unnamed constant. It's something that is translated literally on the screen. It's no longer a variable, so it can no longer change. It's going to do the same thing every time. So, quotes only go around data. And it only goes around so-called string data, which is a series of characters you type on the, character, on the keyboard. You don't add quotes around numbers. All right, hope that makes sense. You only have to make that mistake a couple times before before it burns into your brain. All righty. Well, I want to print out birthday to a couple of other people. You know, Nancy is, is three years old, so I'm going to call this birthday parentheses three comma quote Nancy end quote in parentheses. Then run it again. It ought to print happy birthday Bob twice and it ought to print happy birthday Nancy three times. There we go. Bob Bob and Nancy Nancy Nancy. I'm just going to add two more comments to this and then we're going to go flowchart it if we have time. What time is it? It's 3.06. We started at 2. Dang. I'm not going to ask you to flowchart it even though you learn more to do it. I'm going to go ahead and do it because I can draw it faster than you all can. I apologize for that. If I hadn't done the stuff with the triangle, then we would be able to do it. But I am going to add a comment, and I kind of want you to do it as well. Do start there and then stop there, just kind of like it was pseudocode. How do we know it's a start and stop? It's the first unindented code. It's the first thing that happens, right? After the module is defined, the first thing that actually happens is that. And if that stuff wasn't there, we wouldn't get any messages printed out. All right, so here's what my flowchart is going to look like. And really, you could try to follow along, but you'd probably wind up staying after class to finish it. So when I flowchart something, that has a module in it. If the module is defined first, I like that to be the first thing I flowchart. So I need a module called birthday to my flowchart. I think you'd be better off just watching. So modules start with a DEF keyword, go to birthday, parentheses in parentheses, except it took some parameters. You have you still have your code open. What parameters do I have in my def statement? between the parentheses, what were they? Num, Num, comma, name. All right. And then I had, what was the next statement? Just read the statement in the code. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Okay. 
So that's math. X equals 1. Or I could make it set equals 1. All right, now what's the next line? Is, is it while? Okay. While x less than num, and the book would leave off the word while, but I think that more, makes it more confusing. I don't care if you put it there or not, because if you're following book examples, it won't be there. All right, so while that's going on, and what's the next one indented? And what does a print statement, what's the shape for it? It's input and output. What shape would an input be? Uh, the circle. I mean, not the circle. I'm moving closer to it. Come on, guys. A lot of y'all got tens on your flow chart, so I know you know. That one. <laughs> the parallelogram. The tilted rectangle, to use my childish terminology. Okay, so that was print, quote, happy birthday, end quote, comma, name. And then I had some statement underneath that one. It was still indented. What's that one? Sorry? Okay, cool. So it's a math statement, and it's x plus equals 1. All right, now I'm good to go. That's the end of this. It's the end of the body because it's, the next one's unindented, so i got to draw something back to that. You only draw something back to that if it's a loop, if it's an if. That's why I put the word if there. You don't loop. Only for while and for. So the arrow's return. Right. You want to make the arrow go back to it if it's a while diamond. All right. And then lastly, we came down here and there was one statement that was unindented, which was? Birthday. Nope. What's the first statement that's unindented after x plus equals 1? Maybe it wasn't there on yours. Maybe I forgot to do it. Return. Right? And that's what I just asked about. Then I failed you by not answering it. I apologize. Yeah, so we have a return statement there that's unindented, so it doesn't go here. Instead, it goes here. All righty. Now I need to do the calling code. This is going to be a lot shorter because it, it's going to have a start and a stop and then two calls to birthday. So start is always in an oval, a terminator, a so-called century is what this textbook calls it. So start, and then it has a call to birthday. Function calls, calls to modules are also done in the math blocks, but instead they have the bars in them. And this one was birthday, I think it was 2 comma Fred, something like that, or Bob. Some people customize it, not that. And then we add another call to birthday. It's another function call. It's another module call. So it goes in a block with bars. Birthday, 3 comma quote Nancy, in parentheses, right? And then there was a stop because that's the end of the main code. Now to make it purdy. I usually colorize the function module. So I'm going to just choose the paint bucket and fill it pink or light blue or something. And then I, well, that didn't do it. And then I, wherever I call it, I make it the same color. All right. This is a finished flowchart demonstrating two things. I'm not expecting y'all to totally grasp loops yet. I wanted you to see it, but I'm not asking you to write. I don't think I might have any homework assignments yet that have uh, loops in them. All right. That's looking cool to me. Hoping it's looking cool to you. The real reason we're doing this is so that you can kind of to visualize in your mind the same logic that you're typing because otherwise it's just lines of code and indention and stuff right but if you know that that while statement is kind of shaped like that and a if statement kind of has two branches and then it goes from top to bottom 
and that there are module definitions and then there's a start column. If all that's percolating in your brain while you're programming, you're going to be able to write your code more easily. And technically, I should make you draw a flowchart before you write any programs, but I'm not going to do that. I don't want to spend the next, you know, eight weeks drawing more flowcharts. We'll come back to flowcharting occasionally. All right. So I am going to make a homework assignment based on this, but I'll include the flowchart so that, uh, right, you have something to reference and it'll make it real easy. It's just like copying it. And if you want to uh, draw the flowchart yourself, you know, I can print it out or leave it on the screen for a few minutes. So the e-homework. Draw a flowchart that matches this logic. Define do math x comma y colon. You know what? I'm going to take and then and, and, and then underneath that we're going to do z is equal to x times y, and then we're going to do a is equal to x divided by y, and we're going to print z comma a. Then we're going to return. And then we're going to do do math underscore 10 comma 20. And then we're going to call do math, you know, 30 comma 40. Very similar to this code, except it doesn't have a loop in it, right? Cutting you a break since we haven't, you know, done a chapter on loops yet. I will include the flow chart. I'll also have it on the screen for a few more minutes if you want to just put it on your screen. I mean, if you, if you want to finish it before you leave. Don't have to. Let me make a Dropbox first. Does that make sense, though? Give you a little bit of code. You don't have to write a program. You're just going to draw a picture that matches it. And I believe you've already done one like this, but maybe not. Have you all done a flowchart where you called functions and you colorized it? Yeah, okay, so this is a rehash. It's not going to take you any time at all. But function calls and loops and lists are like the three topics in this class that I want you to learn. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of other stuff I want you to learn is also also, but that's like the three fundamental building blocks of programming. And if you know those three things, then you walk out of here way better programmer than you did when you got here. That's why it's worth repeating. You don't have to upload that turtle one we were modifying, right? We kind of abandoned ship on that one anyways. It was worth doing. And why do I say that? Because hopefully you learned a little bit more about debugging, right? How to go to the line number and test your stuff as you're going along.